Hello everyone, welcome to Club Deck Corner live on YouTube for the second time uh, in two weeks. Uh, two weeks in a row, even two weeks in a row we've been live on YouTube with Club Deck Corner. Last one went well, so we decided to do it again tonight. It's a shame it's not going to be as positive, I don't think, anyway. Uh, in Club Deck Corner this week, we try to digest the disaster that is Dingwall, uh, discuss the future of the squad and a resounding reaction is required versus Dundee as it is third time lucky and the game at Dens Park is going to go ahead. I am Scott Carney and before I come and introduce the lads, I will just quickly give a point to our end of season live show that is at the Loudoun Tavern, so Friday the 31st of May 2024, and we will be at the Loudoun Tavern for the second time for our end of season show. There is still tickets av available and they are £10. You can scan the QR code that's on your screen right now or you can go to the link that's in the description for this podcast and you'll be able to get your tickets there. Uh, we'll very much look forward to seeing you all there. The usual stuff, there'll be pies, there'll be... Um, a raffle for the Rangers Charity Foundation, some amazing prizes, etc. So please come along and uh, see us at the Loudon for our end of season live show and Ali might buy you a beer. Uh, joining me tonight for, for so I'm sure it's going to be a rather interesting podcast is Ali Pearson. First off, Ali, how are you, mate? How's how's the dog? He's all right. I could do with a beer, can't I, to be honest. After <laughs> yeah, Rangers me too. Well, um, but no, the dog is... Um, yeah, I actually took him into work today. He had his first full day in my work today, so he was. Uh, I think he was. He was all. He was behaved for a. I mean, he's only been here two weeks with us, so uh, he's, he's doing well, and he's allowed out as of tomorrow properly. He's had to go through injections, so he's allowed out to go and socialise now. <laughs> Exciting times, mate. You can take him for very long walks. Would Rangers disappoint you? Uh, I, and also joining us for. In fact, this is the same lineup as well as last week. Nicky Oven, Nicky, how are you, mate? Not too bad, mate. Similar to Ali, I'm I'm busy at home. I've I've nearly made it two weeks of looking after another adult mate. So we're uh, another uh, human, sorry, not adult. Um, so we're doing all right. But... She she grew up quickly. <laughs> yeah, quite right, but, um, it's actually it's actually somewhat easier looking after her than it is watching Rangers games at the minute. So um, I will we'll, we'll dissect the the disaster in Dingwall as you say, mate. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's been a few days on, and I don't think it's really got any better. Really, to think to think about just how much of a how much of a mess it was um, at Dingwall on on Sunday. It was it was it was shockingly bad. It really was, and that is obviously where we will start. So the defeat is um, it's a poor one. There's no getting away from it. It's not what we expected. Uh, I think Ali. I think it's quite easy to. We were we're all saying before that there was that this this end of season run was going to have ups and downs and whatever, and there was going to be drop points. There was going to be this, and I understand that. I do. I don't think any of us expected it to be in Dingwall, but I think the biggest thing about Sunday, um, and the more that you reflect on it, more after watching it back, which was horrific, man. Honestly, it was even worse second time round. It's the manner of this. It's not the fact that we got beat. It's the the manner of it. Ross County were genuinely unlucky not to score more against us. And at this stage of the season, mate, that's a bit of a major red flag. That was a huge worry. The, the worry for me was first half against Celtic the week before, Khan. We, we've mm -hmm. seen it there when they looked timid, scared, frightened on the ball, Rangers. And, and they started like that um, at, at Ross County. And you've, Ross County were the only... They, I mean, they showed... They, they wanted to go and win that game, Ross County. Rangers looked like they didn't. They just looked frightened again. Um, ball was a hot potato. Uh, Ross County cut us through, cut through us with ease, um, especially through the midfield at times. And it was extremely poor by Rangers. Carney. They, they just, they, it didn't look like a team going for a championship. Um, and as I said in the, the post match, Carney, you're in the business end of the of the season now. Every game is a cup final. It's a cliche to say, but every game is a cup final. And Rangers. Unfortunately, in my opinion, don't look like they have it to go over the line. They don't look like they have it. I said after the Celtic game, I thought they had to win. Um, I stand by that. They had to win. They didn't. Um, and the Ross County game just just shows why I don't think they'll go on and win the league, to be honest. I, I get the argument, mate. I really do. Um, I, I can understand that. It's, it's a weird thing to be saying when 
we know that we are very much still in it. I mean, it's a, it's a small matter of winning every single game. Yeah, I do understand that. And the, on paper, you're like, well, you're still in it, but it's it's not like that because Nicky is very much a a team that just looked as if we were faltering. A team that looked like we had lost any sort of cohesion between us all helped by the defence that has been shaky for weeks now, it really has, and it's an area we'll concentrate first of all. We, we didn't look, we don't look like we've got any control, and it's all, it is all stemming from the fact that Goldson, that has been the rock for so long, and he has, and I, I understand people that are, I told you this about Goldson, and you get a lot of people saying, I told you, I told you so, I told you so, I do get that, but Goldson has been, kind of mainstay in this team for a number of years and more often than not he's been solid however there is no getting away from for the past I don't know month maybe more his form has completely dropped off a cliff and I don't think it's a coincidence that he's considered one of the leaders a lot of people have put him as um, captain over James Tavernier a lot of people said they would give it to Golden over James Tavernier but his form is it's atrocious just now it really is it's a guy that looks like he knows that he isn't playing well, he's absolutely out of form, and I think there's, I think it's stemming from him, and I'm probably over dissecting it quite a lot. I do get that, but the defence is a real worry me about just how shaky we look. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, firstly on Goldson, I don't, it's neat, there's neat, it's neat lie, right? Gold, Goldson's been our best centre half for a number of years, right? You could argue maybe Halander. I fully fit Halander was potentially better, but but Goldson, as you say, has been the mainstay, right? I think one of the one of Goldson's biggest attributes for me as well, right, is he plays every single game, right? He's constantly available. I mean, he's he was he, he the quickest Rangers player ever to hit three hundred appearances or whatever yeah. the landmark was. I can't remember the exact figure, but he, he obviously has that, that massive attribute that, that he plays well, but. I think um, you're, you're right, Scott. I think the worrying thing for me, mate, was we looked majorly leggy. We've just came, we've just came off the back of two weeks off. How how are players tired, right? I get we're getting to kind of the, the end of the season, right? And boys have played for 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 large parts of the season. There's a lot of minutes in the legs of people like Connor Goldson, John Lundstrom, James Tavernier, etc., etc., etc. But They've just had two weeks off, right? They, those three players that I mentioned are, are probably three of the main culprits, I think, whose whose form has taken a dive over the last month or so. None of them were on international duty, so they've not really got an excuse where they didn't get that breather, right? They had that sort of rest, recuperation, work with Clement and the squad for those two weeks, but as you say, they've just not started since they came back. Um I think for me on on Sunday, I think Clement picked the wrong team. I, I think obviously we we were on this pod last Tuesday. Um, at the time, I think we were still under the assumption that we would play against Dundee. We obviously done our teams and our scoreline for Dundee before the the circus on Wednesday. I think one of the key things I said, and I think you boys echoed it, was it was going to be a battle up there in Ross County. It was the exact same, right? It was going to be a battle. It's not a great park. It's a Sunday. They're going to be up for it. They're in a relegation scrap. It was going to be a battle. So how how boys like Fabio Silva gets the nod, Kieran Dill gets the nod, Borna Barisic gets the nod, right? Why, why are you picking these people to get into battle for you? Why are you not picking people like Sima, Matondo, even Raskin? Diamandi's another one that massively frustrates me, right? I mean, I've never had a thumb injury, right? But who, who's seeing this off? Who is signing off this guy to go and get a thumb bloody um, thumb surgery at the as I said the business end of the season right? You talk about your marquee signing in January and we're coming at the biggest period of your season and somebody signs. Surely you can strap up right? Just get through the next six or seven games and then you can deal with it in the summer right? Um, but I think to to try and put a, a positive spin on it, Scott. The, the last couple of weeks ha, has been bad. I'm sure we'll go in and talk about individual players. Again, with the power of hindsight, we talk about it every single week. Back in October when Clement took this job, when we were seven or eight points adrift of Celtic and they looked like they were flying, I think if MD at that point said, listen, we, we'll potentially get into the split a point behind them, you'd have bit their hand off. You would have mm-hmm. bit their hand off. I think the biggest, the biggest problem we have at the minute is 
we all, we didn't have it within our grasp, but and we didn't have one hand on the trophy, but we were in such a strong position three, four weeks ago that we could have really put our foot down in their throats and, and we've just failed to capitalise, as Ali says. But I think to try and keep that, that positive spin, win tomorrow night, it's still just a point. Anything can happen in the split. On paper, they've got dro- there's drop points written all over them. On our five fixtures, on Celtic's five fixtures, there's drop points written all over them. There is some tricky fixtures in there. We're away at Tyne Castle. We're away at Parkhead. They're away, I think, uh, is it Dun- they're up at Dundee playing in the Lagoon. And then I think they're away at Tyne Castle. As we- maybe t- another away at Kilmarnock, actually. So anything can happen. We've seen stranger things, Scott. We've seen teams going to the, the, the split four and five points ahead and, and no win the title. So the, the situation doesn't change for me. I think prior to Ross County, we had to win every game to win the title. We had to win those last six games. I think it's still the same, mate. I think there was a few about we could maybe go to Celtic Park and get a draw. Personally, I think we still had to win it to get that psychological aspect to go over the line. I think we had to win it. Nothing changes. We've dropped three points, but nothing changes. We still need to win those last six games, mate. Yeah, I agree. I do agree with that. And Ali, I think it's um I think it's actually quite funny that we should have had Nicky on the post match because he's Tune was a wee bit different on Sunday, but he's had a couple of days to calm down and assess it, and I do get that. But he makes a point there about Clement. And I agree the starting eleven was wrong. He should never have picked it. And the, the manager's defence, he's probably still looked at who he did pick and thought, surely that's enough to beat Ross County. You would like to think that's enough to beat Ross County. And that's the bit I'm like, I'll give you a wee bit of leeway there. However, the manner that the, the way the players approached the first half and in fact they approached the entire game, it looked like everybody wanted somebody else to do something. Nobody really wanted to do it on their own and nobody really wanted to take that chance. We didn't really have a game plan, for for, for want of a better word. I don't think it, it, the application of the game was good at all, um, really at all. But my biggest criticism that I have of Clement for um, Sunday was, why did he not change that at half time? We all could see our left-hand side was nothing. It was non-existent. Silva and Barisic were doing absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing, and made nothing coming from it. They're not the only ones, by the way. I mean, I do mean that. We'll move on to the midfield in a wee bit. We'll kind of go defence left side, and we'll come back to the midfield before we get to the attack. But, in fact, we can play incorporate the midfield into this bit, as the midfield didn't work either, which was making the left-hand side even more null and void we just didn't have anything coming from it so a way you can say yes okay you can understand why he's picked this team in, in order to because on paper you should be beating Ross County but not changing it at half time was it's the biggest mistake Clement has made yet yeah and he's he's made um, he's changed it at half time in previous games so it's not as if he's never done it before it's not as if he's one of these managers that waits to the 70 minute mark and they'll make changes he's done it before so I honestly thought Honestly, think, Carney, that he thought we've got out of jail. We're one nil up here at Ross County. You would have thought he'd give them a kick up the arse at half time and go, right, lads, you can't play that bad in the second half. You've got out of jail, go on and kick on and get the second and get the third. And then they've went that. then they've went, hod my beer. Yeah, <laughs> aye, well, I know. But that's probably what he thought, Carney. If Rangers had went in the in at half time, one nil down or whatever it is, which Ross County Ross County should have been winning the first half, to be honest, I think he might have made changes at that point. I think he probably looked at where we were at that point. We were leading the game. We're playing Ross County. We should be going on and putting Ross County away. Um, and he's probably said to him, like, well, I'm going to give you 15, 20 minutes to get a second goal. And well, as you say, kind of they collapsed and, and conceded two goals within five minutes. But it's... Um, aye. He does take the blame, come on, for... Teams like certain players like like Fabio Silva's one. I don't want to bash players here, Carl, but Fabio Silva has not played well for Rangers for weeks. Probably the Hibs game, I thought he was poor. The Celtic game, I thought he was an embarrassment to be in since, a Rangers jersey. Since Benfica, think... since Benfica away, really, he's not hit that height again. No, nah, he had that one good game, as you say, Carl, in Benfica, which I thought he was outstanding. Um, mm-hmm. But since then, he's fallen off a cliff. And I, he did, for me, didn't deserve to start um, at Ross County. I don't want to see him um, against Dundee tomorrow night. I don't want to see him at all. <clears throat> so he, he got that wrong. Kieran Dowell in the middle of the park. I said I would put him in. Um, in hindsight, looking back, the midfield didn't work at all. 
So I doubt we'll see that tomorrow night. But he'll take blame for it, Carney. But ultimately, the players in the park for me are just <laughs> they have to take the blame because yeah, it was it was um it was shambolic up there to be honest. Yeah, it was Nicky the 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 question that John Lundstrom as well has, has come back up about the new deal and whether he's getting one or whether he should be offered one for that matter, and I think a lot of kind of flip flop back on this and um I have to say but after Sunday I was ready for getting rid of eighty percent of that team um and I now with Lundstrom I think there's you you kind of fall on two camps. Everybody will say no. This is the Lundstrom that we've seen before. Um, we, he, he's had these patches and then he falls away. He is part of this considered old guard or leadership team. I do think Lundstrom's. I don't think I can't really fault his effort. I can't fault his kind of commitment. I don't think his legs really want to do. His legs won't do what he wants them to do right now. And I also believe that he's trying to take on everybody's job because I do think he's one of the players when everybody's having a stinker, including himself, he tries to do everybody's job. When he does that, though, he leaves us so bare in the middle of the pitch, just continuously dropping back and trying to pick up the ball from Golchin from two feet away from him, pick up the ball from Suter from two feet away from him. It isn't. It doesn't work. It really doesn't work, especially when you've Barisic on the left and it's something that doesn't it doesn't offer them an out ball and it doesn't offer anything to the team and it is a real a real struggle for us to get anything going and leaves us open when he decides that he's going to try and do everybody's job for him and that's probably as kind as I could be he was stinking on Sunday really was terrible but now mate have you are you changed I can't remember what your opinion was previously about offering a new contract or not but where do you think he falls does he fall into the group of the old guard that should probably be moved on or would you be offering Lundstrom a deal I've, to be honest, I think previously, mate, I was I was probably siding with you. I, I probably would have given Lundstrom a, a, a new deal because he'd, he'd hit that purple patch, hadn't he? Similar to, to the John Lundstrom that we'd seen in, in the Europa League run just a few years ago. Um, but, yeah, he, he's he's massively fallen off a cliff. I, I think, to be honest, John John Lundstrom and, and, and James Tavernier have, have drawn... I think the vast majority of the plaudits since Clement came in, and, and I think mm-hmm. that's deserved, right? Butland aside, Butland's been the kind of standout since the start of the season, but I think Tavernier and, 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 and Lundstrom have been largely very, very good under Clement's reign, um, but the last the last three or four weeks, I, I think they've been horrific. I think we go back to to Benfica, as as Ali alluded to, when when Fabio Silva was great, I didn't think Lundstrom was 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 particularly good in either of those fixtures. I think Tavernier was the same. I think Lundstrom was poor against Motherwell. I think he was poor against Celtic as well. One of the big games you, you expect your centre mid, your 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 main starter centre mid, John Lundstrom to perform in, and I, I don't think he performed there. And then again on on Sunday he was he was particularly poor and. The thing, as you say, Scott, you can tell when John Lundstrom starts losing losing confidence because he, he drops in and he starts man marking our own centre backs. Yeah, Connor Goldson, as we've seen historically, is is more than capable of playing a ball 30, 40, 50 yards to switch play. John Souter, in my opinion, I'm not saying he's the best defender. I think John Souter's probably the best ball playing defender in the country. You look at what he did with Hearts in terms of being able to step out break a press by either getting by boys or pinging a ball in, into the centre mids. He's, 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 he's certainly one of the best about in this country. He does not need John Lundstrom standing five yards for him to take the ball off him. What, what, what we need is for John Lundstrom to position himself behind the Ross County press that allows John Souter and Connor Goldson to play a, a nice triangle around their centre forward, get it into John Lundstrom who's on the half turn and he can go and create something. You think back to, was it the Hibs game? Yilmaz scored a brilliant ball. I think it was Lundstrom's ball over. I think he'd done a very similar sort of assist a, a week or so later as well. John Lundstrom was contributing to this team, but he is reverting very quickly back. And I think I made a comment in the, the WhatsApp the other day, mate, which was Clement came out in his press conference probably two or three weeks ago, I'm sure, to say something along the lines of he has very high confidence that John Lundstrom's contract will be sorted. I think there was a wee bit of noise about down south potentially looking at uh, looking mm-hmm. at him. 
is, is it a coincidence now that John Lundstrom has tied his cell up for another one or two years here on big wages and he's just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to get back into my comfort zone. I'm not going to try and do the things that I was doing that takes me out of my comfort zone. I'll drop into that sixth position. I'll drop into the centre-half position. You're not used to us, John Lundstrom, in that position. We, we talk about it all the time. Ryan goes on about it all the time in this podcast. There is no need for us to be so defensive in our midfield when we are playing teams like Ross County, etc. We need centre mids who are going to who are who are strong in transition, who are going to create things. That that's what we need them to do. Yeah, they might need to do a wee bit of the dirty work in terms of breaking up play, but 90% of their game is going to be about how we can break down low blocks, how we can break down midfield and defences. That's what we need John Lundstrom to be doing. And, and at the minute, he's, he's, he's not doing that, mate. He is getting on a wee bit, and, and there is a worry there. I think when you talk when you talk about are we getting value for money out of our players, John Lundstrom, Connor Goldson, two of the highest paid players in this country, not even Rangers alone in this country, are we getting value for money on them too? Not a chance. Yeah, yeah. Again, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I do. I, I, I can get it. I think the with Lundstrom, it seems to have, it, it does seems to have taken a, a bit of a dip. Um, but as in his in his defence, I do think he's looking about and going. We're all having absolute stinkers, and he tries to do his best to somehow take control of the entire game, which I don't, <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't think does anybody any favours. It really doesn't because it, it breaks all sort of structure that we have. Ali, we'll move on to the front line now. I've tried my hardest to back Dessers, I really have. I've done everything. I, I thought, no, no, he's the only guy we've got. I'm gonna to have to I'm gonna to have to back him because there's not really any choice. And even now I still don't think there's any really a, a great choice in it. The matter I don't think we'll come to later on discuss the kind of different options I suppose what we do going forward. The fact of the matter is, mate, he's not good enough to be a Rangers number nine. It's as simple as that. What well, I uh, in the the blog that I released the other day, I said uh, when you have a decent striker, he will get you out of jail when the rest of the team are having a stinker against second bottom in the league, Ross County. The chances he missed on Sunday, for me, I, I immediately went from glass half full to glass half empty on him and I thought, no, I can't anymore. I can't I can't possibly put up an argument that you're the guy that I have got confidence in in scoring goals. It leaves us in a real predicament, mate, because the defence is all over the place. The midfield isn't settled now with the rotations that have been happening, but by a Monday going to get his nails done. It's 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 left as a wee bit at risk is the only way to say it because we don't have a firing front line just now. We haven't had a firing front line for a fucking a long time, but you, you'll get where I'm coming from. He's now not scoring the chances. He's now not at least scoring one of the chances that comes his way. Well, just move on to it. What do we do with that front line going forward for the rest of the season? What would you do? If you were in charge, Rangers, what would you do? There is kind of options, if that makes sense, but what would you do? Or do you believe that no matter what, Clement's going to persist? Oh, it's difficult. Dessers is what he is. He's he's not good enough to be a Rangers number one striker, can he? Maybe a third choice, third choice striker or something potentially, but he's not good enough to to lead the line for Rangers. When he missed those chances at Ross County, can he? He's just, they're sitters, but he does it every week, can he? If he takes if he takes that one against Ross County, we go two 0 up. We could be sitting here talking about a different, completely different game altogether. We've been unfortunate with injuries with Danilo, who's been out for months. We won't see Danilo at all this season. Um, Kamar Roof's been... Kamar Roof is not fit enough, obviously. And Seema's been injured too, so we've had to go with him, but he's just not good enough, Karen. If it was me, I'll be interested tomorrow night to see who he plays through the middle, because Dessers, for me, has to come out. He can't rely on this guy. See if we're going to Parkhead, can he? And we know when it is, it's the third game in the split. I would not rely on Dessers going to Parkhead. So for me, we need to get somebody through the middle before we go there. Is it Seema? I don't know. I'd have a look at <laughs> I'd look I'd have a look at Kamar Roof through the middle, Carney. Um even if he can give you 60 minutes in a game, I would look at Kamar Roof through the middle. Um Seema's an interesting one through the middle, but he likes to play him off the left. If you're playing Seema through the middle, does that mean Silva plays off the left or does Matondo come there? So it'd be interesting. But for me, um, Dessers has to come out. He has to come out the team. But 
I would put Kamar Roof just to see what he's got. And we must have something, Kamar Roof. He's been back for months, Kamar Roof. And when he comes on, he, look, he looks sharp, Kamar Roof, when he comes on. So for me, I'd play Kamar Roof and see, see where we're at with him. Can you last 60 minutes, Kamar Roof, and give us a shift for then? <laughs> I know you laugh about it, but that's what I would do, honestly, Carney. What's it? The guy, the guy's a natural striker. He's the best finisher at the club. He's been he's been back for months. It's not as if he's been he's only back for a week or so. He's been back for months. Yeah, he's been back um, for a while. So I would give him a go through the middle uh, and see what it's like, and I would put Seema left. That's what I would do. Yeah, Nicky, I honestly think like I'm, I'm, I know it's uh, turned into a Dessers bashing, but I honestly think pretty much any striker in the league that got at least two of the chances that he got on Sunday, they would score it. Uh, and that's, I think, where I've got to the point where I'm going, not anymore. I, I really can't be doing with this anymore. Ali makes a point, though. We don't have many options, right? We don't. There's not much that we can do in terms of a front line. But surely, and maybe is it a sign of how desperate we are that we want Kamar Roof to start? Because I'm very much along the lines of Ali as well. We have to at least see what we can get out of Kamar Roof because Dessers, for me, is... He's, very quickly running out of these last few supporters now. No, you're right, mate. I think um, I, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot, right, because there's been a lot of debate on, on Twitter about who do we do with this team, right? There's there's loads of names kicking about about who, who we're getting rid of, who we're, not, who we're keeping, etc. Et it's all hypothetical, right? Um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll quickly touch on Tavernier just quickly, and then I'll, I'll maybe revert back to this. Yeah. If that's all right, mate. Just because I know we've touched on Goldson, I think everybody knows where we sit with Borna Barisic. Tavernier is the other big name, I think, that's been thrown about quite a bit about his performances. Do we keep him? Do we let him go? The, the biggest problem, I think, with, with Tavernier in, in, in this squad at the minute, right, is, is probably two things. I think the first thing on Tav. I don't. I don't ever think you get sixes and sevens consistently at half, right? I think you either get eights or nines in terms of his performance, or or you get a four, right? I I, I don't think you ever get games where you go Tav was all right. You either get games where you go Tav was Tav was fucking brilliant, right? Because he scored goals, he created big moments, he, he gets assists, or he's had an absolute horror show, right? He's nothing's went right for him. And, he is, he, is, he is a bit like Maton, uh, Morelos in that. I think within five minutes, you can tell what Tav you're getting, right? You look back to Ross County, that first time pass, he tries to play to John Souter, where John Souter rightly turns around and you can see him. You can li- read his lips going, what the fuck was that? Straight away, you know, Taverni's having a horror show here. The other, the other thing for me, though, is we as a team are still so reliant on that guy. Like, we are so reliant on him. Ever since Morelos lost his form three years ago, we as a club have been so reliant on James Tavernier to drag us through games in terms of scoring goals, creating goals, creating big moments, etc. Et you think of the Euro run, you think of even the League Cup final last year, he must have scored six or seven goals against Celtic in the last two years as well, right? We've not addressed that whatsoever. So... I get there's there's kind of two camps at the minute. There's one which is James Tavernier is still so important to this team. You need to keep him. There's another camp that's I'm done with him. He's he's too much a liability. I, I'm somewhat in the middle still, um, in in terms of what we do with him. The biggest problem for me is I think because we're so reliant on James Tavernier, right? When he gets into these these patches of form where he's he's dropping to fours and fives, we drop points. And immediately people point the finger at James Tavernier and go, you're the cause of that because you've had a stinker and we've dropped points, right? For me, I would be looking at who are the other leaders, right? Who are the other players in that dressing room that will go, do you know what? He is having a bit of a stinker, so I'm going to grab this game by the scruff of the neck and I'm going to do something. I'm going to make something happen. These are people like John Lundstrom, Cantwell, even Dessers as your number nine, they should be the guys that are grabbing the initiative. And, and you're totally right, mate. If you think back to, come on, made a comment today, right? And people are people are having a dig at him about, he's watched the Man City treble documentary. I don't know if any of you have watched it, by the way, it's pretty good. But I've not watched it yet. I think I've, I've, I've got halfway through the first one, but I fell asleep. <laughs> the, point, the point he was making is, Man City won a treble, right? They didn't play 50 or 60 games 
and every single one of them was perfect, right? They had games where they had off days. You see images of Ruben Diaz, Gundogan, um, John Stones, Kevin De Bruyne, tearing apart dressing rooms, right? Because they're the leaders and things aren't going well. Teams teams have these off days. And, and Sunday was one of the days. And, and you're, you're spot on, Scott, right? You think about the situation, right? Visualise, we, we've managed to go 1-0 up here through a, a massive stroke of luck on that corner, right? We then somehow managed to salvage a chance. Fabio Silva takes a shot. It deflects across the box. Dessers gets it six yards out. He, he puts that away. It's 2-0. Rangers only playing very well. It's 2-0. But five minutes later, we, we again managed to, to fashion a chance down the left-hand side. The ball's flashed across. It must be four yards out. Dessers puts it in Rose Ed. A, a, a capable striker again gets his foot wrapped around that, puts it in the back of the net. You're three now up, right? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, Ross County's halftime team talk is not. It's how do we stop this being five or six, lads? Right? That that's what their team talk is. How do we stop this being five or six? But instead, they see they see those and they just get energy and motivation for it to go. This mob aren't playing well. They are here for the taking. We can get a draw here. Never mind three points, right? We could go and we can get something out of this game. Dessers is is completely finished for me, mate. That he, he is simply not good enough. I mean, you talk you talk about your your glasses is half half empty, right? I've dropped my glass and it smashed <laughs> over the player with Dessers, right? He is he is simply not good enough. The biggest problem for us at the minute we don't have an alternative. I think I get where Ali makes a point about Kemar Roof. Kemar Roof at Parkhead's a disaster, in my opinion. Honestly, if we think Kemar Roof up front at Parkhead, it's a disaster. Because surely, surely there. now though, yeah, surely now though's the chance to give him the opportunity to see if he can do it. I think his legs are gone, mate. I think they're mm. done. I honestly think even if you give him 180 minutes, I, I think his legs are done. I think Celtic are going to be 100 mile an hour. We've seen it before. We've seen it in the games under Geo. We're punting balls up the park. We're trying to keep the ball. I just don't think Kemar Roof keeps the ball up there and it's wave after wave and you're just asking for trouble. I think if it's me, I go for pace and power. I go Sima. I go Matondo. I probably try and get McCausland back in the team. I go. I bring width. I bring pace. I bring power. I think that's the way we can hurt Celtic. Celtic are, Celtic are going to dominate the ball at Parkhead. There is no denying it. They are going to dominate the ball. Um, we need to play counter-attack. We're, we're good at it. We've, we've done it a lot. It's been our blueprint in Europe, particularly away from home. I, I would go for a combination of those three. I think Fabio Silva can maybe come in and out and, and support those three, but I, I would be going I would be going pace and power. I think Seema's probably slightly better off the left, but we've not got any options. Matondo can't play through the middle. He probably takes the left. McCausland on the right. I would stick Seema through the centre and see what happens, mate, because I think, similar to you, mate, I'm, I'm just done with this. He doesn't offer anything. And I get Clement's trying to keep him on side, but he's 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 ran out he's he's ran out of patience with people now. Yeah, I think Seema through the middle is another shout that people have been saying and it's something else to try and I even mentioned as well not that I particularly wanted to happen but Silver through the middle, try that again try some, try and get some form out of Silver as well I think we need to try something because just relying or trying to rely on Dessers for the rest of this season isn't really going to cut the mustard um, in, in my opinion, I don't, I just don't see it I, I don't see him Really recovering from it, really recovering from it. The, the guy seems full of confidence, but I don't know what he's confident in because unfortunately he's just not a very good, fo- another good football, uh, not a very good football player. Even Ali shipping three goals in the manner that we did is all down to mentality. It's not to do with my opinion. It's not to do with tactics. It's not to do with anything, any sort of game plan. The the, the team lost their head. They absolutely lost their head. They got very very nervous. We got very shaky. We got very. What's the word? <sighs> very kind of spooked, very spooked by what we were seeing because there was no reaction, there was no difference. When we went a goal down, all of a sudden, that was uh, when we went to one each, it was full panic stations. We lost all sorts of composure. Based on it is on mentality, how important is the reaction that we are hoping to see from this team on? on Wednesday night at Dens. I don't think it be, can be underestimated that they have they have the season now 
and 90 minutes to sort something out to try and not salvage something, but the train has been slightly derailed. Um, or majorly derailed, I think, probably for the fact that it's the way the manner that it was against uh, Ross County. But against Dundee, how crucial is it for this team to show that they've got the mentality because it's all or nothing, really, tomorrow night? No, it's, it's what a must. And it's, it's it's down to the players, Carney, to, to, show, to show us as fans that um, they have it to go on in the last six games and, and try and go for this title because at the moment, most of us fans at the moment as I said, like myself, can't see them going on to win this title, can I? Because they failed us umpteen times and I just don't think they've got it in the last six games. But it is over to them to prove us wrong, can I? They're going up to Dundee tomorrow. I know the pitch isn't great, obviously, with the sand on it and everything. But again, Dun- I mean, I mean, you're touching, obviously, we're coming on to Dundee, playing Dundee. But I mean, Dundee have guaranteed top six. It is a free hit for Dundee tomorrow night. Dundee can come and have a go at Rangers if they want because they're, they're, they're in the top six. Um, so it'll be interesting how they approach it, Dundee. But Rangers need for a minute one car. They need to come out and show us something. They really do. Because if they don't and they, they go back into this kind of timid um, state that they've been in the last couple of games in the, in the first half in particular, um, you'll be worried going forward. So... It's a cliche, and I always say it, can I always get a feeling in a game after after ten minutes of, of how it's how they're going to be Rangers, and I think it will be like that tomorrow. But um, it'll be interesting in his, his team selection. But they have to be, they have to show a reaction tomorrow, can they? Because if they don't, the league will be dead and buried tomorrow. So it's it's up it's up to the, the players tomorrow. Absolutely, yeah. I think the the. The reaction is probably more than anything, and Nicky, I don't know really know if it's going to be down to you, but it's not really a, a, a game that we can expect a real performance by the team. It's not a, a game that you're thinking that we're going to go there and play some free flowing, amazing football because I don't think it's going to work like that. Even if the pitch wasn't in the state that it currently is, but this team just need to show that they've got something about us. They need to try and re recapture what we had seen after Clermont came under. My, one of my biggest concerns is, is, as Ali mentioned, is we've got previous of this. It's players can get, these players have got two managers, the sack. I'm not backing, I'm not defending Bill by any, by anybody. I don't want him to get confused that I am trying to back Bill because he was a car crash, a, a manager, a, an experiment that did not work. But they have done this before. They seem very good at taking on new instructions. They hit a bit of a run. We, we seem like we are we're getting somewhere. But we, when Clemence came in, as well, that's happened. We look like we've got a bit of structure behind us. P- people know their jobs. They seem to simplify things. And But it seems to get so far, and all of a sudden, the cliff face happens. And I think that's what happened on, on Sunday. And my biggest fear is that Clement has now got this squad. I don't believe there's any doubt that Clement's going to be our manager going forward because he thoroughly deserves his chance for the way he's managed to salvage our season to get us into the position that we are in just now. But I do think he's got to the point with this squad where he's went, I can't take it any further without not ripping it up and starting again, but need enough doing that. Yeah, you're spot on, mate. I think, firstly, on, on your point about mentality, sun, Sunday was a mentality thing. You know yourself, we've all played football, right? You lose a goal, you're most vulnerable your next five minutes. You, you get your head together, you get into shape, you don't do anything stupid, you do, you do everything simple. And, and you stop yourself conceding another goal and you work your way back into it. So the fact, the manner in which we conceded those two goals so quickly is is, is just down to simply losing the head. I'm not even sure it's mentality. It's just it's fucking lack of concentration. It's schoolboy stuff, every other metaphor you can use, right? It's just completely losing the head. But no, I think tomorrow you're right, mate. I don't think the park is going to allow us to play scintillating football, but it... it, it we know that we, we see that in Scotland every second week or every third week, right? That there are these are this is just the nature of these these parks. Unfortunately, what what we need tomorrow, mate, is is we need to see an energy and a desire from the eleven bodies who are on that park, whoever it may be, that they want to win this game. You, you want eleven player or ten outfield players, for example, to win their battle against the whoever it is that they're up against, because that's what it will be. It's a battle, as Ali says. Dundee have got a bit of a free hit. I mean, for me, the the team talk's written for Clement already, right? Dundee have fucked you about for two or three weeks now. Go and get them a doing. 
and off the back of Sunday, everybody's laughing at you. Literally, everybody is laughing at you again, calling you bottle jobs. Are you bottle jobs? See if you're not. Go and prove them wrong. You've got six games here. If you win the six, you're champions, right? What an incentive, right? Six games. You lost at Parkhead at New Year. You won 12 on the spin, right? Six is doable. I get there's hard fixtures in there. I do get it. But there's, it's not Real Madrid we're playing, right? Every single one of the games are winnable. So it's a massive incentive. 18 points in your champions. So everybody's laughing at you the minute. Everybody's calling you bottle jobs. Go and win it. Um, and, and, and I think I'll, 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 it will be very interesting to see his team selection, mate. Because I think, again, that will tell you who I think he he trusts and, and who he's maybe lost a wee bit of patience with after Sunday. He made a comment today about it's the first time he's seen his team like that. I'm not sure I agree with that, right? You think back to Motherwell, you think back to first half in Celtic Park. I think a few of you guys say that in the WhatsApp. But it's the same players, right? So change something, right? Because as you say, these players will, will throw you under the bus. There's limited in what you can do between now and sort of June, when the June, July, when the transfer window opens up. You need to make you need to stick your big boy pants on the summer, mate. You need to make mm-hmm. big decisions, right? But you there's an opportunity to make big decisions just now. I don't think we'll see things like Goldson come out. I think lack of alternatives. Likewise, I, I think Dessers. I think lack of alternatives. Maybe see my butt. It's all about desire, mate. Win your battles, press. What what we seen when come on first came in that press, really aggressive, winning the ball, flooding flooding their half. I think he uses a phrase, strangling opponents, right? Strangling them so they can't get out. That's what we want to see tomorrow and see if, see if that happens. The result will take care of itself. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't disagree. Ali, I think no matter what, even if we go on to have an incredible season this season, and it's a, we have one of the best Mays that we've ever had um, as a football team, as supporters, even if that, that dream does become reality, I don't think there's any doubt now, based on what we've seen at Ross County, is that we've still got problems with the core of this team. And Nicky's right, a few things you mentioned, but in summer, Clement and Coppin are going to need to be absolutely ruthless with players. If they're not in the plans to be the first team choice going forward, they have to be made aware of that and we have to do something about recruiting their replacements. There is now too many. There is now too many. The old guard, as we spoke about, and they've time and time again moving back and they've let us down. It's now up to the players. I think tomorrow night's going to, I think it will tell us quite a lot about how we, the rest of the season is going to go. I don't, I say, I just mean by winning the game. I think if we win the game and it's not hold on to the edge of your seat stuff and biting your nails for 90 minutes then if it's a comfortable win then you'll go right okay at least it's a chance to regroup it looks like they've reset but no matter what in summer there's going to need to be major work done on this squad ah, huge, huge work uh, Clement knows that I mean, he would have known before he took the Rangers job on Carney he's got to tune out some of these players when they come in when under Beal we were getting nothing and he's got to tune out a group of players that are a core group of players that we see have failed us over a, a period of time which since they've been at Rangers and in big games, Carney. Um and they have. I know they got to a European final, which was a great achievement and stuff, but they've failed us in big moments. Um so yeah, they'll need to be ruthless in the summer, Carney. They'll need to say to all well, these players, I mean, we are, we are brilliant at giving players a, a, a year's deal and like, like Ryan Jack, for instance, players like that, sorry, I like Ryan Jack, but you're no use sitting on the bench, go. Kamar Roof, again, we're talking about Kamar Roof coming in for six games to try and help us, but he has to go. Um, I mean, you talk about Lundstrom as well. I, I said I would, I said three, four weeks ago I would have given Lundstrom a contract um, based on his performances. But previous to that, I said I'll judge him at the end of the season to see where we're at at that point. And he's faltered again. So he's a guy on a, a big a big wage that Rangers will need to probably say, no, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll move on from you and we'll reinvest that somewhere else. So, yeah, it's um, there'll be big changes in the summer, Carney, but we don't want this every summer, turnover and turnover of players. So hopefully this summer when we bring players in, we can use that as a base to build going forward. But um, it'll be an interesting time in the summer, but we've got some big games before we even get there. <laughs> Yeah, and just on that, the post match, um, the post split fixtures were announced uh, Sunday, twenty eighth of April, St Mun away, 
12.30 to kick off. Sunday, 5th of May, home to Kilmarnock, a 1 o'clock kick off, smashing. Uh, Saturday, 11th of May, Celtic away, 12.30 kick off. And Tuesday, the 14th of May, Tuesday's a random one, is it not? Uh, Dundee at home, uh, a half seven kick off, just to be a wee bit different again. And our last game of the season will be Saturday, the 18th of May, Hearts away, 12.30. It doesn't really matter who we play in the all, and I, was, I suppose it doesn't, it doesn't, but we have to win every single game. It really is as simple as that. On to tomorrow night now, um, Nicky, where the game is the game is confirmed to go ahead. <laughs> it is confirmed to go ahead. Third time lucky, and we're actually going to play football on this on this pitch. Um, I know you've mentioned it, mate, and obviously in the presser today, it was confirmed that Red Van would be out, Diamond would be out, and Balogun has been sick the past couple of days. Call me cynical, mate, but I thought, is that not a bit of a coincidence considering everybody's screaming for coaching to get thrown out the team for a bit? Yes, possibly, mate. I don't want to read into it too much. <laughs> I was, man. I know, I was just like, no chance. Really? <laughs> I was I like, know. come on. He's kind of been on the cusp for a number of weeks now, and as as the noise gets gets louder about Goldson coming out, it's all of a sudden we can't take him out because we've got nobody else, right? Because um, I can't see Ben Davis. Ben Davis is, is not a sniff in weeks. I've not even seen him on some of the squad lists. I don't know if any of you two can enlighten us or any of the guys in the chat can enlighten us what, what Ben Davis is up to. I, I've got absolutely no idea, but I very much doubt Ben Davis will get a sniff between now and May. And alongside some of the names that Ali mentioned, Ryan Jack, Borna Barisic, et cetera, et cetera. I think he's another one that we need to make a, a, a pretty stubborn decision on in the summer that he, he moves on, to be honest, in, in terms of surgery. Um, but yeah, I think um, I, I kind of see a lot a lot of changes tomorrow night, mate. I think um, that there will be a few. As I say, I, I think tomorrow will, will be a bit of a battle. We'll, we'll certainly be heading north, whether it's to Perth or Dundee. We're, we're, we're yet to, I mean, they're saying Dundee's on at the minute, right? But I could change it at the last minute. So. I don't think they can now. I don't, think not? They can I don't think they can change it. Now, there must be something in place as if this game's cancelled. There must be something. Ali's shaking his head and unmuted himself as if he oh. knows something I don't. It's no, it's, it's confirmed. The, the, the weather's just, the, it's not terrain basically between now and the game kicking off. They and know if, that, they made, so. if they made sure all the bottles of water around the pitch have got the lids on as well. Aye, they've, they've done that as right. well. So I know cool. it, it, it's aye, it's confirmed. It. I think they did it today, Carney, just to make sure it was playable. But they know the weather forecast, as we know for the next, I think the next week or so is to be dry. So um, there's no forecast for rain. So. I will be playing on the, the sand dunes of um, Dens Park tomorrow okay, night. Yeah. Knock it. So I it'll be it'll be a battle, mate. I think there's I think there'll be a few changes. I, I'm not expecting masses, but again, I think I think that's largely just down to the options that, that Clement will have available to him, mate. Um I think Goldson will, will stay in. I think it'll probably be the similar back back two that we'll come on and, and talk about when we do teams, mate. But as I say, we it, it might be a lot of the same personnel, but we need we need a massive shift in attitude tomorrow night. Or, otherwise, I think one of you guys used it the, the phrase this this season is just going to go in a, a damp squib, right? If 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 we don't see a massive one eighty in terms of attitude and, and application for ninety percent of these players tomorrow night. Yeah, Ali, I would love to say I'm looking forward to watching Rangers tomorrow night, but I'm, I'm I don't I can't say that I am because I don't know what I'm going to see. I really don't. The, obviously the the, the the pitch is obviously a, a kind of cloud hanging over it, no pun intended, but a cloud kind of hanging over the, the game itself. But then you've got us coming into this after the the, the just a, the absolute disaster that was that was Sunday, that the manner of the the performance, if you call it a performance, I don't really think that it was, but it is it's one of those things where you're like, just go and win the game of football, just do what you need to do to win that game of football and then we'll see where the kind of dust lies after the semi-final. Hopefully we perform a wee bit better there as well. Yeah, we'd all love to see a, a great performance by Rangers tomorrow. I wouldn't, but, I wouldn't hold no, your breath. I was, about, <laughs> I, wouldn't. I, was, I was about to say, <laughs> looking at that part, Carney, I, I don't think it's a, it's going to be a fantastic spectacle to watch. I know it's live on Sky, so um, I don't think it'll be a great one to watch, Carney. I agree, Rangers need to go up to Dens and they just need to get three points. Um, I think it will be a bit of a kind of battle. As as I've said, Dundee have got a free hit at Rangers tomorrow. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they approach it. But 
just go up there, Carney, and, and win the game of football. And I agree with you. We'll then roll into the semi final, which should take care of itself. And then after that, we'll we'll see where we are at that point. Um, with five games to go, then. But yeah, just go up there, Rangers, and and, and win the game of football and and um, put the gap down to one point at that point. So that, that's all it is for me. Just win the game. I think the key yeah. thing for me, Scott, just to jump in before you come in, mate, the um, one of the things that was so good about Rangers under Clement, right, there was a period where we hardly conceded a shot on target, right? There was like four or five games there in the bounce where we only conceded like one or two shots on target across those games, right? The, the XG against us, I don't read too much into stats, but was massively down. We need to see a shift back towards that. That that's what will that's what will give people confidence back in terms of having that structure and shape back that stops teams breaking through. As we've conceded six goals right in the last two games. I get one was was against Celtic right, but we've conceded six goals in the last two games. That, that is not good enough. We need, we need mm. as I say. I don't. Tomorrow will not be about scintillating football. We need to see a game where we stop Dundee causing us problems and, and we create a lot and, and we play a lot of our game in their half and we create lots of chances, whether that's through long balls, because it's not going to be intricate one-twos in the edge of the box with it, the, the pitch, but we need to see something. We need to see that effort and desire that creates a lot of chances, but but probably more so stops them creating chances and gives us a wee bit of confidence in that teams who are, let's face it, far worse than we are, are not able to cut us open as easily as what Ross County did at the weekend. Yeah, spot on, mate. Absolutely spot on. Uh, it's just, you go, go and get the win. Just literally go and get the win. But you, you, you are right. I think Ross County's XG is the highest we've played against on Sunday out the whole out the whole season or something. I don't know where I read it was, that. It was, it was the highest, it's the highest since, I think, two games against Celtic, mate. Yeah, so I mean... <laughs> That, that totally shows you how which is wild how poor we were yeah it's just right. as it's, it's it's crazy uh, and you're right the, the the I think we conceded six goals in 12 games under come on when, when, when he came in and now it's been six in two games which is just nowhere near uh, the standard that we're going to need to be need to be at for the remainder of the season that's for sure uh, right Ali I'll come to you what is your starting 11 and what is your score prediction for tomorrow night Oh God, honestly, I don't think <laughs> anyone's going to get it right of what's happening tomorrow. It's difficult, Carney, because Borna Barisic, I don't want to see Borna Barisic, but I think we have to play Borna Barisic to play Sterling somewhere else in the park. Yeah, so this is the dilemma for me. So I'm going with Tav Goldson, which a lot of people will not like, but who do you bring in? Because Balogun I would. there. I would have played Balogun though. If Balogun was fit, I would have played. Yeah. I would have got goals out of dodge. I really would. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I, on Balogun, I don't get how he's unfit. If he's unwell, I don't get that. I don't how you're suddenly unfit. I mean, I don't. I don't know what his illness is. So oh, I've got a funny it's feeling a, about that it's one. A bit weird. I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's mm. a, yeah, it's a bit weird because he was on the bench against Ross County. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so Golds and Suter, as I say, Barisic. Um, a midfield of Lundstrom. Oh, I, I toyed with a dabbling Lawrence in there. I'm going to bring Nico Raskin back in, Carney. I'm, I'm going to give him a shot in the midfield and give him a chance. So him, Cantwell just in front. Silva gets nowhere near my team. So I'm playing Seema out in the left where he should be. On the right-hand side is Sterling. I would play him there. Um because I think he's good just in front of Tav. And he's, he's that the way the park's going to be, Stillings the type of guy you want on that park for me. And I said it, Carney, <laughs> Kamar Roof, 60 minutes. That's I just want to see where he's at. I'm playing him for 60 minutes um, through the middle. And I'm going to go Rangers. Oh, I think it's going to be a dodgy one. 2 1 Rangers. Oh, um, see Matt score the first goal. That didn't make me feel very nice when you said that, mate, to be honest. Um, I, I agree that Sterling will come into the team. Um, I don't think there's any doubt, but I wouldn't be playing him on, on the right. I think you're right, Barisic is going to need to start due to Gilmaz still being out. And I would have played Balogun over Goldson. Um, so the back line's the same, back five as you've picked. I'm putting Lundstrom and Sterling in the midfield to try and get some form of control in the middle of the pitch that we were severely lacking for the full 90 um, on Sunday. So I'd bring Sterling in there. I'd play Cantwell in front. On the left-hand side, um, 
I'm toying but with it. I really am about starting Matondo because Shima to start on the right. If not, I think Shima on the left, roof through the middle, and whoever you like on the right hand side. I'm not going to say even Scott Wright, but I'm at that point even Scott Wright. Honestly, what just because he's yeah, because if he's fit enough, yeah, if he's fit enough, then then definitely there seems to be something going on there. Whether he's not recovered well from his the injury that he picked up, I think he was on international duty when he picked it up. So. But yeah, just I think it's crucial for Lundstrom and Sterling to be in the middle of that pitch to try and get control of this game and try and get control. And we can build from there. If we control the midfield, we should hopefully take care of itself in terms of the rest of things. But I'm saying I would start Kamar Roof just to see where he's at, even if he gets a half, the first half, just to see where he is at. When, because we need to try and do something different. Because I can't watch Dessers continuously kick the ball out the stadium when every time he gets a chance. Um I'll go for 2 0 Rangers and I'll go for Seema to score. Um, Nicky, what is your team and your score prediction to finish up, mate? Just one thing, I've just thought about something here. Ben Davies used to play like left back, by the way. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I've never thought about pulling him at least. He's got to be better than Bona Baristich. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? That's true. And yeah. as you've got the boy Yefeko. Or the Feko, I mean, yeah. the biggest problem you've got with Bona Baristich is either play him and it, it's a horror show. <laughs> or you take him out and you sacrifice Sterling, who's who's better elsewhere. But I think for tomorrow night, mate, I think um, I've went Butland. I think it'll be Tavernier, Goats and Suter. I, I think Barisic will come out, mate. I think we, we spoke a bit about Scott Wright. He played three games in the bounce and got hooked at half time. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's twice now Bona Barisic has played and been hooked very, very quickly. It wasn't quite half time, but he got hooked at half time at Kilmarnock. He got hooked very early again at the weekend there. So, I think Sterling might come in at left back, um, just just to provide a, a, a bit more a bit more steel than, than what Bar- Barisic gives you. Um, I think centre mid Lundstrom, I think will play. And we are, I think Raskin might come in. Um, I, I would probably bring him in. I think he brings you a lot of energy. I, I, Raskin's stats are good as well. I know, I, and even on the eye, I think Raskin looks quite good at sometimes. I'm not really too sure what's going on there. So I think I'd be inclined to bring him back in. I did toy with McCausland. I'm not convinced it's the game for, for somebody like McCausland. Again, I think Dessers will, will lead the line. I think Cantwell will be in behind him. I thought he was all right on, on Sunday. He was probably the only one that looked as if he was trying to do something. And I would put my tondo and Sima or, or, or on either side, whether whoever's left, whoever's right. I don't know. You can interchange or whatever. But again, just to give us a bit of pace, a bit of physicality, a bit of running, um, that's what I would go with. Um, I'm actually going, I was going to say 3 now, but I think it'll be 3-1. I, I think we'll, we'll be a bit more better, better defensively, but I think we'll concede. But I'm going to go 3-1, um, and I think Seymour will score first as well. I'll take it, just win, please Rangers. That's all I ask tomorrow night, is just win that game of football. That would be very much appreciated for every single one of us. Um, for tonight, Alistair, thank you very much. No problem. I look forward to Pretty much this time tomorrow night, we'll know exactly we'll half an hour into the game, so we'll, we'll know about at that point. But um, I just win Rangers, that is all I ask of you tomorrow night. Yeah, Nicky, cheers, mate. Thanks for having us on, mate. I've, I've been on better, better podcast, certainly more positive podcasts, but um, aye, but massive game tomorrow, as I say, it's uh. It's an, see, see, see when you play football, right? You know yourself. See when you get beat, you just want to get back out and, and play a game and, and try and rectify mistakes. Rangers have got the opportunity very quickly, right? You could have waited a week. It could be next. It could be next Sunday. You're waiting on the final, the semi-final. Sorry, you've got an opportunity really quickly to rectify mistakes. Go and show it, right? Go and show it and and uh, show us that there's still a bit of fight there to take this to the end. Yes, that's all we asked for. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. It was short notice, but I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, very much appreciated. Good to have all your comments, as always. And, yeah, we will be back tomorrow night with a club reaction. Win, lose, or draw. Please be a win. Rangers, please be a win. And we'll bring a reaction to the Dundee game. So, until then, I very much hope your team wins. We have been Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>